So, we, this is something different. So I know. Do, uh... Hey, Will. Sorry, go ahead. Can I ask, despite this being different, are you excited? Yes, ex exactly. <laughs> so, this will be existential for us. We're making so many X puns right now. <laughs> so to this is kind of a follow up, I think, to the 1992 version. I haven't watched uh, its entirety of the X Men animated series, uh, which is simply titled in this version X Men '97. Yes, it is a follow up to the uh, '90s X Men cartoon, and continues where that one left off. Um. You don't need to have seen the original X Men show, but it does help, and they are a lot of callbacks. Yeah. Um, but honestly, what do you think of the show? Or at so, least this first season. Uh, I think. So from the episodes I've watched, uh, I'm gonna get to the uh, the current one in just a minute. But from the episodes I've seen for the '92 version, I really liked. It. Yeah. Um, there's actually one part that I think is done better in the this newer series compared to uh, the older one. Mm -hmm. um, but I know you suggested that I uh, watch the show and funny story I actually got both shows mixed up a little bit. Um, but after getting through all these uh, episodes, which is really only 10 episodes and each are just a little over half an hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I actually think, uh, this series is really good so far. Yeah. Um, so far, I understand this is just the first season we've got, but I think I understand there's another season on the way. Yeah. And it was intended for like at least three or four. But yeah, this first season was fantastic. Um, having read the comic, I love this a lot. There are a lot of callbacks to the comics. There are a lot of um, characters that have n are not in the movies that get, like, there's time to shine in this, like Bastion. Oh, yeah. And Mr. Sinister. Um, those two are great villains, and they work really well off each other. Mm -hmm. um, I will say... I don't want to spoil it, but the end of the fifth episode was so good. I was like, that told me we need to review this. No, like, I'd say out of all the episodes, the fifth one is probably the best one. Yeah. Because, I mean, this show is mature on its own, but... Which the original cartoon was... I mean, it was geared towards kids, but adults can follow it fine. And Yeah. And, like the original um, comic, there is the allegory is still there about because for those who don't know the X-Men is like an allegory for the civil rights movement of the 1960s and it's always portrayed the heroes as the marginalized group mm -hmm. and characters like Magneto resemble the extremists of those marginalized no, no, groups oh is it okay Will? no no everything's okay just give me a minute okay should I keep talking? Okay. As I was saying, um, the um, characters like Magneto represent the... Um, where was I? I love the dog back in. So where was I, Will? You're talking about uh, how uh, the X-Men is supposed to portray like the civil rights movement. Right, so yeah, so characters like Magneto represent the, more the extremist side. They're willing to work with Magneto if the cause comes around. Mm -hmm. um, if they need to. Uh, but they know he's not in the right, um, and that's what kind of makes him a sympathetic villain and makes me like the character a lot. Is that he does all this awful stuff, but he's kind of right. We've, we as humanity have done a lot of messed up stuff in our past. And so I think that's one of the rare times where you could actually agree with the villain and where they're coming from. Yeah. Um, and I actually watched the uh, trailer for this uh, first season. It actually gives a pretty big uh, reveal of what happens in the the at the end of the first episode. Uh, yeah. Um, 
I mean, we can spoil that, I guess. It's the first episode. So basically, in this uh, world, uh, Charles Xavier is not around, and uh, Cyclops... He died at the end of the original show. Yep. Cyclops is chosen to lead as the, as the leader of the X-Men, but at the end, it is revealed that in Charles' last will, uh, that uh, control of the X-Men was actually transferred to Magneto. Yeah. Um. So I actually talk, remember talking to Jessup about this because i asked him like you know because the next few episodes leading up to episode five were pretty much uh, magneto trying to win the trust and respect of the x-men because we've mm -hmm. known him as a villain for so many years but uh, to see him now as a hero to be honest uh, i think we were both very open about it yeah um i mean they do kind of team up with him in the second of the live action movies so yeah, that's true. I think that's what really helped a lot. Um, in addition, um, one of the things that makes it all the more tragic is that later on in the show, we find out Magneto really did care about the movement. And he wanted to respect Charles's will. Mm -hmm. It's just um, the events of the uh, best episode in this season kind of snap Magneto back to the reality that uh, humanity is not worth saving. Oh, yeah. His mind. And uh, the crazy part is that even though Charles and uh, Magneto have feuded for uh, many years and they've uh, differed over so many ideas and philosophies on, like, you know, if mutants and humanity can really coexist with each other, they really did value their friendship with one another. I know. That's what makes the tragedy of the two characters so much more heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. They now, cared about each other. Now, going back to uh, something I think this reboot did better, or not reboot, this follow-up, uh, was the character of Morph. Oh my gosh, Morph is great. <laughs> now, in the, um, now, the 92 version, he's in literally one episode, uh, from what I've seen, and then we never see um, him. He does come back in later episodes. Um, oh. it, it's a little confusing with Morph. I'm not going to get too much into it, but yeah, it, it, they make it seem like he dies in the first episode. But he does come back for bits. And yeah, the way he it, comes back is explained in the original show. Yeah, but in this one, I feel like he's more of an established character. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think it's safe to say he's pretty much comic <clears throat> relief in this uh, season. That's all he needed to be is comic relief. Um, yeah, I mean, granted, it's a pretty stereotypical, like, you know, trope to give uh, someone in the super in a superhero show. But you, I feel like it's kind of a welcome trope, you know? Yeah. I always thought Gambit was more the comic relief in the original show. That's yeah. how he always came across. But and I like Gambit too. No, I love Gambit. I think uh, he had yeah. one of the best character arcs in this whole show. Oh yeah, he does. A uh, Nightcrawler also has some great stuff. Um, Wolverine. I, I know a lot of people love Wolverine as a character, but he's and he's has his own thing going on that's not really important to the plot. Mm -hmm. But he's a lot more sidelined, so the other X Men can like take center stage. Right, I mean, uh, there's a lot of stuff they really focus on, like uh, Gene and uh, Scott's uh, Cyclops' relationship, um, uh, bringing in this new character named uh, Roberto, who's trying to figure out where he belongs in the world. Sunspot. Sunspot, yep. Um, there's actually um, a, there's actually a love triangle that happens in this uh, uh, show between uh, three characters. I won't say uh, who they are, but I actually thought that by the time episode five wrapped up, that executed that was executed pretty darn well. Yeah. Um yeah, um I will admit um there is a thing um like a general rule with reading the X-Men comics is that every it's not entirely true but the saying goes every character has either been with Emma Frost or Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um X-Men is basically just the superhero soap opera, but they are a family at heart. Yes, uh, and uh, I feel like when the movie starts off, or I'm so used to us calling uh, us uh, reviewing movies. I'm not used to us reviewing shows, but this is the second show we've done. Oh yeah, but the the start of the show is pretty uh, typical for a superhero show. It's like they establish the story and setting of where all of this is taking place. There's a conflict that arises. The X-Men have to like band together to uh, try to stop this uh, threat. They take uh, care of it and save the day. 
But then we realize there's a twist to waiting for us at the very end. Mm-hmm. Also, I got another question. What do you think of all the cameos? <laughs> that was honestly the best. Like, I know they weren't going to probably going to do much of anything, uh, but like uh, one specific cameo uh, that encounters Rogue uh, actually did come, catch me by surprise. Also, having Worf kind of change into some of the characters too kind of helped as well. Oh yeah, it's like wait, when did this person come on? Oh wait, that's actually just Morph. Never mind, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> also, it gives us the more shape shifting gives us the best cameo ever, in my opinion. Yes. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? I feel like after episode five, it's pretty much. Uh, just the X Men trying to figure out, like you know, who's trying to start a war between the mutants and humans. And while I say the last couple episodes were really, really uh, good, I feel like uh, just the wait from episode five uh, was just really hard to match. You know? Yeah. Well, you were watching them. Um, I went back and uh, binged them all um, again, like second time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the. I, I agree to an extent. Um, a lot of the themes are like really powerful in those later episodes, but um, it's just like episode five was just so big, at, especially at the end of that episode. Um, I am kind of scared to like, we might accidentally have spoiled it unintentionally. <laughs> Well, let's see. I think this show came out around March, so I think a good chunk of people might have already seen this uh, show. Yeah. yeah. But I think we're still going to respect uh, the people who haven't seen it uh, yet uh, and try to keep this review spoiler-free. Yeah. Um, I just don't know what you can talk about with episode 5 without spoiling it. Because <laughs> so much happens to that episode. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I will admit, I teared up on my second time doing that episode. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I got a little teary. No, because uh, not only did that uh, episode give us like a bunch of characters that we've all seen before, like uh, Nightcrawler, Blob, uh, and uh, Emma Frost, and uh, all those different uh, people, especially with a another big uh, X-Men character who we've only seen in literally one of the theatrical uh, movies. I won't say who it is, uh, but let's just say he looks pretty good teaming up with a wisecracking uh, Mark with a mouth. And I think uh, Josh Brolin would look good playing him. <laughs> well, he, he, yeah. Did you know anything about the character's backstory? About Cable? Yeah. I do know, like, you know, who he, who his family is. Uh, and I know he okay. he goes to the future. Yeah, but that's kind of the most I get from him, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, no, he's got this whole, he's got this whole thing in the comic. I do love him as a character. Like, no, I think he's a very interesting uh, character. Imagine if we ever got Deadpool in this show. Actually, Deadpool makes a cameo in the original show. Does he actually? Oh, now I'm gonna have yeah. to watch the rest of this. Uh, he doesn't I- say a line though. What? He doesn't say a line. He doesn't say oh, anything. Really? Yeah. It's more just like a uh, Wolverine having a flashback and briefly remembering him. If I remember that episode correctly. It's been a while since I've seen that episode. Okay. So it's either that or it was like a hologram and it actually wasn't him. It might have been Morph at one point. I think it was Morph. I, I don't remember that episode very well. <laughs> I just know he has a brief cameo where he just briefly shows up for like a second. And okay. keep in mind, at this time, because this was in the 90s, Deadpool made his date comic debut in 1992. Yeah. So he was still a very new character. They didn't know what they were doing with him yet. They just threw him in as a cameo. I mean, uh, to be fair, when they first tried him in X-Men Origins Wolverine, that was a pretty big mess, to say the least. That is true. Um, I think the only other medium I had seen him in at that point was Ultimate Alliance. Do you ever, oh, yeah. Do you remember those? 
I do. I haven't played them in a while, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I have the um, I have the um, first two on my PlayStation. Okay. PS2. So the the uh, lamer versions, but what what can you do? Yeah, exactly. Um... Literally, the first Ultimate Alliance is the second Ultimate Alliance is just a completely different game on the PS2. <laughs> Um, Same actually, basic story, just different stuff. Actually, I just remembered. Um, while episode five was probably the best of the whole season, I know we talk about that a lot. I do want to talk about the season finale, though, and the, how it ends. Yeah, did you see that coming? I honestly uh, did not, but when a certain name was uh, said, I'm like, oh no, this is going to be really bad. Also, did you see the post credit scene at the end of the final episode? I did. Yeah, I missed that the first time I watched the whole sh- season. I caught it my second time viewing it, made sure to get it. Yeah. But, yeah, this show was great. I really yeah. like it. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do for season two. If this season does uh, well enough, which I think it will. Um, Is there anything you want else you wanted to add? Um... There's a lot I could add. I just don't know what you'd want me to say about it because I, I know some of the stuff is topics you don't want to get into because there's a lot of like behind the scenes stuff that happened. Um, and there was a bit of a backlash towards this uh, before it came out. Yeah, I don't think we need to uh, go into that right at the moment. Yeah. All I'll say is that the backlash was not warranted. Um, this ended up being really good. Yeah. Like, I feel like uh, if... Uh, this one was just... This is just more of a nitpick uh, for me, personally, how it feels like... Because I know they did this in the 92 version, how it kind of shows, like, some of the stuff that you will see in the episode. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't mind that, but just try to keep that to a minimum, you know? Yeah, I know. I know. Um, yeah. Um, <sighs> yeah, the show is just really good. We really like it. Yeah. All right. So Until I next actually, time. Yeah, so I actually oh. haven't decided what I'm gonna, we're going to do for the next review, but I'm coming up with some ideas. Okay. Um, but I'll tell Jess up on what we're doing later on once I officially figure out because I'm going to be starting a camp soon. That's going to take up a good chunk of uh, time, but I'm sure I'll figure something out. Yep. All right. Until next time. I don't don't know what, what other uh, lines I, I have. But lines Morph I can... smash! Morph smash! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love, that was my favorite cameo. To me, my ex-friend. <laughs>